You watched the fight. I watched Chan the fight. Chan Sung Jung, Korean zombie, losing to Yair Rodriguez in the fifth round with one second left mm -hmm. on that clock. You know what's funny? In watching that fight, I think initially I said to myself, oh yeah, Yair, he's looking so dynamic that he should be able to just pick Chan Sung Jung apart. Yes. But if you recall in the last video, I was like, there's something about that dude where he just keeps on bringing the energy, keeps on coming forward. Right. And no matter what you hit him with, he's basically just going to keep putting that pressure on. Yep. I actually thought he was winning that fight up until the very end, obviously, when he got knocked up. But right. very impressive showing by um, the Korean zombie, Chan Sung Jung. Like, he did his thing. Yeah. It's really unfortunate, kind of, actually, how the fight had to go. Because, I mean, that boy, two years off, comes yes. back, and then... Yeah. So I feel for him. Listen, no losers in that fight. Mm -hmm. I think they both put on a fantastic display of martial okay. arts. Yeah, yeah. I thought that... To your point, I thought Korean Zombie was dominating that fight. It's dominating in quotations, mm -hmm. but was really controlling the action. I thought he was up three rounds to one, yeah. heading into the fifth. Yeah. And I was he was winning that fifth round. That would have solidified the decision, in my opinion, mm -hmm. four to one. Yeah. That being said, props to Yair for in the last ten seconds putting on his putting on a little bit of a show there. It was mm -hmm. kind of weird because it was a stalemate with ten seconds well, left. It was a stalemate and then there was a couple times in that fight too where we saw them basically put their hands up and maybe try to get the crowd involved yeah. or just try to get some excitement. But if he hadn't done that at the end of the fight, put his hands up and basically try to get the fight involved yeah. or the crowd involved before he rushed them, I'm curious as to whether it would have ended that way. I think maybe it did him a disservice kind of doing that at the very end. Yeah. It, it's, I don't know, it's, you want to get the crowd involved, but you also want to focus on the fight. I mean, we're here to fight, right? Very so it, true. it was a funny thing to kind of do. He wears his emotions on his sleeve. He fights with reckless abandon, and yeah. that's why we love the Korean zombie. That's mm -hmm. why he's named the Korean zombie. True. And the guy always delivers, and that's why he's in the main event slot. Mm -hmm. So I'm not even going to hate on him for going after Yair in the fifth and final round with one second left mm -hmm. in putting himself in that vulnerable position because that's what's gotten him to the level he's at right now. Okay. I will say that people need to pump the brakes on like this being the fight of the year candidate for me okay. because I enjoyed it. I thought it was a great technical fight. I thought it was a good five-round fight between two featherweights with mm -hmm. good cardio. But aside from the knockout, I thought it was just a solid fight. Yeah. I didn't see anything that stood out in my mind mm -hmm. where there was knockdown after knockdown. That really got me excited. I agree. Yeah. They both came to fight and they both basically just, they, they brought a good solid effort. But yes. I think they are getting a little bit ahead of themselves in terms of the MMA media and saying that this is an all-time great fight. I enjoyed the fight, but yep. there's a lot of good fights that are competitive like that. And so, yeah, this might be um, a little bit overblown, overdone. Yep. I got to be with you on that point as well. I guess. No no real title implications for me either, which well, is crazy. That's, well, do you think that there truly are none? Because with the yeah, year beating Chan Sung Jung, I mean, he has to be back at the cream of the crop or close to the top of that division now. Yeah. So it's like, what the heck happens to him? He's next? a top 10 fighter, don't get me yeah. wrong. And, and both of them are top 10 fighters, mm -hmm. but they're at the bottom of the top 10. True. I'm talking 9 and 10, and 8 yeah, and 10. Yeah. And, and we still have the top. We still have Moicano, Bekdich, obviously, Ortega's fighting Holloway. Yeah. We got some big names up there. Mendez is now fighting Volkanovski. Mm -hmm. Zabit's now calling out Yair. And that's one that it seems like Yair maybe is running away from a little bit because yeah. I saw an interview where he was like, oh, you know, if, if that's the what the, that the UFC wants, then right. I'll take the fight. But like, right. bro, like, this is your moment. If you want the fight, you could have had that fight. Yeah. So there's, there's a bit of a Yair has there. his sights on a on like higher territory he mm -hmm. wants that one to five slot yeah but listen you're you're on a one fight winning streak mm. after losing to frankie edgar you need to pump the brakes you need to get more octagon time in fact you were losing that fight except for one second of it i'm not even sold on yair left where do yeah. we go with yair then that's what i'm kind of wondering we about. give him that beat and we really see yeah, who's, who's right better yeah, yeah. yeah. I think so too. I mean, obviously he's lower ranked, like you said, but yeah. everyone that knows MMA, ourselves included, knows that Zabi is the future anyways. Yep. And if you're going to fight him anyways, you might as well fight him now when he's at his younger yep. stage. Yep. It's not going to get no easier. He's getting better and better. What do you white belts think? Do you think Yair should fight Zabi or do you got something else in mind? Let us know in the comments below. As always, we'll see.